Is your principal dead? And in yellow and black font at the bottom of the screen, Lady Thatcher dies in Sweet at the Ritz. And I sort of, I sort of went, it must have been 200 grand a day there paying for that sort of stuff. Get out of this uniform as quick as you can. But you could go on to surveillance, you could go on to protection. There were so many avenues that wasn't advertised in the I joined the Met. We were vetted to a higher level than the royalty lot as well. And you're living their life with them. There's a goat stood on a pile of bricks eating a plastic carrier bag. They didn't put that in the tourist brochure. Going home with Toon Carmoon's death mascot. No, I always wear this to work. It took me eight years to go on that team. No amount of money bought a second of time, did it, you know? Your worst day is someone's best day. Comparison is a thief of joy. Today on the debrief, I have a metropolitan policeman. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Morning, Phil. Where did you come from? Yeah, morning, Phil. Thanks for having me on. My name's uh, John Richards, um, former Metropolitan Police Special Branch uh, Detective, as was on uh, royalty protection. Oh, I did 18 years there and uh, and retired in 2019. 2019, there you go. Let's, uh, let's take you right back to the very beginning. What was you like as a nipper? Um, well, from a mining family, working class mining family in Nottinghamshire. Um, yeah, pretty, you know, pretty normal schooling, uh, maybe a bit wayward. Could have paid more attention, as the teachers used to say. Um, yeah, uh, sister, uh, stepbrother. Stable family type background? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I mean, the sort of, you know, the sort of 2.4... Nuclear family, a bit of divorce in the middle, you know. <laughs> when I was seven, off I went, you know, to um, to 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 wherever it was. Yeah, so that was that was okay. Um, and that, and uh, yeah, the sort of normal schooling before I joined the army at sixteen and a half. Bit of were, army were, cadets. Were you army cadets. How did you get in the army cadets? Well, you know what? I joined the air cadets first. Okay, don't hate me. Yeah. Raff <laughs> guys. I thought you know they got nice slick, build, build creamed hair, etc. Not a bad uniform. But I remember sat in sat in the classroom. And looking out yeah. at the army cadet guys and girls running around with the weapons and everything, and I thought, yeah, I'll have a bit of that. You know, I like a glider, but you know, I prefer to be out there. Yeah, you're a long that. way off getting in the glider when you first join up. Oh you? yeah, you don't even get. You're going to get a gun on day one in the army. No, cadets, yeah, isn't you? exactly. <laughs> off you go. Off, off to off to Northern Ireland. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so yeah, army cadets just loved it, and and you know, you do some great work for them as well, don't you? So, but it, it definitely it does keep you on the sort of straight and narrow because. A lot of guys and girls obviously want to use that as a stepping stone into the military, and if you've messed up there, you, you're not. You're not. Sort I think of, even if they don't use it as a stepping stone to get in the military, you know, guys and girls that do those out out of school activities tend to go a little bit further in life. Generally, I think. Do you know what I mean? It's just because they get more structure, teamwork, exposure to other things, and a few life skills in the bank that the schools just quite frankly don't give them. That's it, that's exactly it. Yeah, it gives you that um, that bit of discipline as well. I mean, mum was a Worcestershire and Sherwood Foresters B Company. Um, which I don't even think they're a regiment anymore, are they? They've got they got they got, they got chewed up by somebody. You know, politicians again, <laughs> you know, saving <laughs> a bit, of, saving money for their um, for their <laughs> food and drink in the Palace of Westminster, which we subsidise as taxpayers. <laughs> don't get me on to that. Right, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you came to your end of your schooling. What was your plans? Where, where did you go? What did you do? Tell you exactly what I did. I went to the Army Careers Office in uh, Worksop, Colour Sergeant Vic Axworthy in there. Grenadier Guards, and I went in, and a few of my mates had gone in Royal Engineers, Phil, yeah. and I thought, oh, they're going to get a trade, I could uh, I could do that. Didn't know what, what I wanted, I just wanted to get in the military yeah. and get away. Didn't care. And get, I, you know, I, did, I, I really didn't, yeah. Uh, so in I went, I said, oh, I'd like to get a trade, you know, my pals are in the engineer. He went, no, 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 no. He said, look at that uniform, look at that bare skin, tunic, look at the women, women you'd get up with that. I thought, yeah, 16, like 16 <laughs> and a half. I went, yeah, I'll have a bit of that. He, and he, he picked up this bit of paper off his desk, Phil, and he went, um, Oh, you lot do six weeks training, then then you're off to the Caribbean. I went, yes, signed it up, took my shilling. Dad's driving me home. He said, uh, son, I don't think we've got any um, bases in the Caribbean. I went, you don't know what you're on about, mate. <laughs> so down to the gas <laughs> depot, 42 weeks training, Shackleton Barracks, Northern Ireland, Bally Kelly. And nice I'm like, touch, what a touch. I'm like, <laughs> Sergeant, has there been a mistake here somewhere? Is there not a Caribbean packet? 
get on that bus, <laughs> you, you big nose. Oh, so which, which guards you, who you were? Uh, Grenadiers. Grenadier guards. Yeah, I was okay. a bit taller then. I was yeah. one of the short <laughs> arse than the battalion. Straight off to the second battalion, yeah. Okay, uh, so that was a, a tour of Northern Ireland under your belt, almost sort of like, that was it. Off you go, isn't it? Then well, those. I was new draft out there. So as you know, you can't go on the streets until you're 18. Yeah. So we're all in the company Sergeant May's office. Um, about seven of us new draft. And he just he just goes along, right, until you can go on the streets. Officer's mess waiter. Sergeant's mess waiter. One guy got a dog handler job. that Everyone's like, Ooh. I was right on the end. I puffed my chest out. He went, you can go in the gym as a PTI. I went, oh no, why, why me? <laughs> why did I pop but my chest out? <laughs> it was great. So I went, I did my PTI's course down yeah. in our older shop um, down there, loads of paras and et cetera, your, your old guys and that. Great fun. Came back. The day I got back, straight to a rifle company. Off you go, you know, get going, stag on, yeah. down to Otten and and all that, and, and, and Londonderry. Derry now, I can't London remember. Derry. Well, I'll always call it London Derry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's where you get political now. <laughs> you know what? Bizarrely, I've done I've done some uh, extras work, in which was great fun. But they put me down as an IRA terrorist on some night like, biopic, so they've got a moustache, <laughs> IRA heavy, and I'm sat there going, "This is, you know, who, who's written this? This is his will, you know." Oh, that's incredible. So yeah, uh, and that was it. Yeah, and so. Um, Came back from Northern Ireland, Caterham Barracks, uh, did the old corporal's course there, enjoyed that, uh, hankering to get down the guard's depot as an instructor, as a young lad, uh, which I was quite fortunate to do. The only uh, thing that happened was, um, you know, the Gulf War kicked off, yeah, and all the 1st Battalion guys, who were warrior trained, grabbed back from the depot, sent straight out, you know, to war, so they needed people to backfill them. I was in the Falklands, actually, on one of those emergency tours they did, yeah. you know, the six month uh, yeah, well done, you know, going home early, down the depot, promoted to Lance on, I was like, oh, happy days, you know, so um, yeah. I think, you know, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, and that was that, yeah, pretty so much. How long did you do? What, how long? I did nine years in the end. Oh, well, yeah. okay, that's, that's, that's a fair amount of time, it, isn't it? it? Yeah, but it, it does go quick, and, and a lot of my mates, um, you, either, you either stay in, or, you know, you, obviously either stay in, or you choose to leave, and the catalyst for me was, we were going back to Northern Ireland for two and a half years, and I thought... You know, it's probably time. We'd gone down to one battalion from two, so the promotion prospects had rapidly... Yeah, everybody's clamouring for jobs yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Exactly. So you made the, you made the move. You, you, you thought, right, Civvy Street for me. Did you know what you were going to do when you went into Civvy Street? I didn't. You know, the catalyst for me going as well, another one, I thought, 93, I thought I'll have a go for selection. Right, yeah. So I turned up the August course. And you know you do that first bit where it's like a CFT... And the guy just, you know, over the cat, and the guy just runs off. Yeah. And the next day he did the fan, and I was like, is he all right? Does he need medical assistance? He's like sprinting <laughs> off. I was like, ah, ah. and it just sort of hit me like a brick. I am woefully underprepared for this. So I got halfway up the fan and just sort of wrapped it and thought, you know, these guys are like athletes. I mean, you, don't, you know, the squad really yeah, stuff. Yeah. They are that fearsome um, fitness that will take you a lot of the way, you know. Yeah. Um, so that was it as well. So I kept, you know, I'd, I'd start seeing a girl. I think I was getting engaged. So I thought, I'm not going out there. I've, I've done my time, you know, yeah, nine yeah, yeah, years, yeah, nine yeah. years, and I was 25. So it's just about the right time to join the to join the old bill, pretty so much. So you, yeah. you made your mind up you was going to join the old bill when you when you, yeah. when you sort of got out. I'm getting out to join the old bill. Yes, exactly that. Right, okay. Because a lot of guys, again, natural progression. You know, what do you do? What am I qualified to do? I thought, oh, rear gunner on a milk float or something like that. Yeah. Like, no, uh, <laughs> yeah. off. So I thought, yeah, the, the, the Met. And then... I, I got offered lollipop, man. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <I'm telling> <laughs> God's <laughs> will, you know. It's, but it's about that contentment feeling as well, isn't it? Yeah. The people are just people aren't happy nowadays, are they? You know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's mad. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, off, to, off up to Hendon. And the drill sergeant up there, the drill instructor civilian, was an ex-grenadier, Ken Blanchard. And... Uh, Oh, yeah, I can't, you can't get away from it. You know, he's like, you're, right, you're the drill instructor for your class. Like, oh, you know, struggling enough with the, uh, with the coursework, you know, yeah. all that sort of legislation that you had to learn and stuff like that, points to prove it's, um, it's difficult when you've been I an infantry soldier. A bit, a bit of paperwork. Oh, yeah. Large, you know, I, I was in, uh, everyone was in the bar at night, you know, and I was in there like, uh, in, in the, not the special club, but you could go. You know, volunteer and go and go on the computer, like a do a bit of extra work. Yeah, remedial pencil. Well, that is stuff. pretty, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The old um, rubber hat, rubber hat on, and uh, <laughs> that was it. Yeah, yeah. So you got you got through your training, and do you have to t- spend a couple of years on the beat like a normal cop, or just you do? Yeah, and I was lucky. Attending domestics and 
Yeah, um, I know you had uh, my old governor on. To, yeah, that was my first ever uh, body. They call them a body on right. street duty. So you straight off to I went to Holborn. That's quite a brutal body. Isn't it? That's well, a, <laughs> come just have some pictures. For yeah, the well, it wasn't quite like yeah, it was like <laughs> naffy, naffy Hanging growler. <laughs> it it was actually a shoplifter detained at the British Museum. And I was like, oh, okay, but you know, it's what your first he ever. Nicked? Uh, well, that's that's a good point actually. Pens or you know gift shop. Oh, I well, thought he might be. Gift shop thing. Well, yeah, but you know that guy who's just been nicked for he was stealing all the uh, artifacts out of there <laughs> for, for, for ten years and like with millions of pounds. He's putting on eBay for like fifty quid. <laughs> and I thought, rare Roman well, coin. How did he get away with <laughs> coming? You know, going home with Tutankhamun's death mask on. No, I always wear this to work, and, and I don't care for the accusation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a Rosetta Stone. It? No, no, it's my laptop bag. You know, it's like, so that was my uh, my first sort of thing and uh, my first arrest. Yeah, given into custody, shoplifted. I know some people like big it up. You know, oh, I guess is that, a, is that a a, is that, Yeah, I was going to say, is that a yip yar moment for your first your first body, your first your first count? It is for it is for me. It, it probably wasn't for the shoplift who like you know antecedents <laughs> like all the way up in you know. Um, but yeah, so so that was it, and I thought, oh, crikey, you know, sort of baptism of fire again. Yeah, I lived in the section house up the road from Holborn. Uh, it was only a mile and a half square division, but we had uh, Hatton Garden Diamond Markets on there. So yeah, there's know, a lot of had, North yeah. London, lot of stuff going on in there. Yeah, area. yeah, yeah. It's just on the sort of edge of, of sort of the the central bit, and it goes up to King's Cross. So you had the prostitution bit, and you know, all the football sort of, violence, and the, the old Tottenham, isn't there? All yeah, that sort of stuff. and uh, yeah, yeah. So that was my, one of my first ever uh, football aid was uh, was t- uh, Spurs were playing Nottingham Forest, so my old team, and so I'm there in my sort of yellow jacket, you know, tit on my head. <laughs> Okay, it's not all Sweeney rolling around with robbers, <laughs> and and we're uh, we're having to sort of escort a load of these um, Forest fans through the Spurs lot. I look at this guy. I was like, I was in the air cadets with him. So there's a guy who's come to watch Forest. I went, Ronnie, and he went, Oh, Johnny Richards, hey, big nose. I'm like, yeah, okay, thanks very much. Yeah, <laughs> so I was like, give him, give him a kick in, guys. You can give him a <laughs> give him a good idea. You know? He says you're a lot of crap. Yeah. So yeah, that was that. And then, you know, you do your two years and you're learning, learning, putting yourself up for jobs, sudden death, you know, go up and fingerprint a dead body. I was yeah. like, oh, great. Don't know who this guy is. So me and my pal Danny went up. He comes out of the freezer, not Danny, the uh, dead body. You know. <laughs> comes out of the freezer. One hand is like that, Phil, yeah. like clenched shut. And the other one's open. So I'm like, I dives on the one that's open. So I thought, fingerprint it. That's mine. That's, my that's mate mine. Danny's like... Looking at the street duties instructor who's in the doorway going. And Danny said, What do I do? And this guy's like, I don't know, I've never done it. I think you got an extra fiver for printing a dead body. So the, the instructor went, Well, why don't you get your truncheon out, smash his hands <laughs> so they open? <laughs> I was like, I can't believe this, this ain't, this, there's no no cameras in, you know. Anyway, he said he had, he did it. He pulled these things. He's like, you know, the old frozen chicken. Yeah, when yeah, yeah. Like, gopping. I bet oh, it made the old sound as well, didn't it? Like yeah, cracking your knuckles. But. Oh, honestly, honestly, oh, yeah. Oh, honking. But I, I was quite lucky, Phil. I never had one, any of those like sudden deaths where you'd turn up and they hadn't been seen for like six months, and it's you know poor fam, you know, I've no family to speak of, an old lady sat in a, uh, a sitting room yeah. with a fire going, and you know the cats there like that. So then after a couple of months, they've had no food, they've had a nibble on yeah, a leg. The and, yeah, know, the cats eating half. Of oh it. yeah, they sank into like the old ration packs, you know, pretty similar to. Uh, <laughs> As my mother-in-law said to me, John, you were in the army. Did you ever kill anybody? I said, well, I was a chef, so probably. <laughs> okay, cool. I'll be all week yeah, <laughs> don't, don't write that. Tick them off. <laughs> uh-huh. Aha. Yeah. This ain't going out, is it? We can, we can cut this. Yeah. Right, so you obviously you, you, you did your beat stuff. Mm-hmm. When did you start to decide, right, I'm going to specialise specialise in something here and, and, and do something <sighs> a little bit different? So, yeah. So you finish your two years probation at the end of it. You know, congratulations. You get a... You've passed. Um, what do you sort of want to do? A lot of people stay on teams or go to the CID. I'd been doing night duty, and it, it was quite brutal, the sort of quick changeovers you used to do, the shifts. And I was like, I'm, I'm knackered at 25. How are these guys doing it? One guy was in the locker room. in uh, He was sort of prematurely grey. He's only about 40. His name's Miles. And he said, uh, oh, can I give you some advice, mate? I said, yeah, yeah. He said, get out of this uniform lark as quick as you can and special he said because this is like gladiator academy out there you know you are literally because coming from the army as well phil well people normally do as what you do what you tell them don't you yeah yeah when you're on the street they turn yourself and you're like (laughs) 
I don't know what do I do. You just start get, getting stuck in. So I'm like, oh, crikey, my beautiful looks. I can't take too many. <laughs> <laughs> not the face, not the face. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so uh, I went into the CID for uh, for 18 months, a couple of years, and that was great. That was good as well. Um, so you're dealing with the, like tastier tastier crimes. Uh, but then I thought, crikey, is there something else, something different? And a few of the lads at Holborn... Um, and girls went off and did the uh, special branch exam. You had to sit an entrance exam then. Yeah. And it was at like sort of classroom, um, 180 of us in, uh, up at Peel Centre up at Hendon in, in the sort of gym in rows sitting an exam. And I think 30 of us passed it. I don't know how, but I quite enjoyed doing the studying and it was all like stuff like, you know, Northern Ireland, yeah, politics, you know, one question, what would you do if you're on ports and you see a guy in the queue coming in? He's got a green flag on the back of his rucksack. I was like, oh, don't really know. Well, that's Libya, so yeah. give him a tug, you know. So it's all just yeah. little bits like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you know? just your general. It, it fascinated me. Knowledge, yeah. yeah, and I'd been sort of, you know, the old current burn, have a read of that. Oh, page three, go, oh, yeah, turning it up, and yeah. yeah. And someone went, you forget all that. You get your nose into the telegraph with a highlighter pen, uh, Pairs Encyclope- Pairs Cyclopedia, Whitaker's Almanac, you know, who yeah. were the High Court judges. Start seeing really, who's going through the old Bailey and all that sort of eg- stuff. Exactly yeah. that. And and a friend who I was on the CID with, he'd been up, his name was Nick, he'd been up to um, SO13, the anti-terrorist side, and done a few years up there. And he said to me, the special branch, as as was, was, you know, the power behind the throne. It really was. Um, in fact, there's a story about uh, Sir Ian Blair, who then got rid of special branch when he was commissioner. But when he was a young staff officer, he was told to go to all sort of... Um, specialist departments in the Met and get uh, and speak to the commander of each department, you know, the flying squad, uh, whatever, traffic, you know, that, yeah. that sort of thing, and get a, a, a brief oversight of their role, rationale, what they do, their raison d'etre sort of thing. And he went in to see the uh, special branch uh, commander up at the yard, and it was all sort of secure floors, everything over 16th floor. You know, you had to swipe in, and you had to be vetted to top secret DV. So even as a constable, you were vetted higher than a chief from Senate on yeah, division. Yeah, yeah. That's just, just the way just, it had to just be. To walk the floor, yeah. Well, you know, you know, the yeah. squadrons are NDD, not for downward dissemination. Yeah. You don't, you can't tell everyone everything. I know they want to know, but why do they want that anyway? So he goes in there, giving it large as a, as a new sort of bag man for um, whoever it was, assistant commissioner. Went, yes, sir, we need you to do this and, and fill it in. You've got a few months, and this. Uh, th- so the so the story is, the special branch commander went. He said, uh, no, no, no. He said. Um, Finish your gin and tonic. I can do it now for you. You know, it was old school. You know, have a have a drink and that. <laughs> the old draw, desk draw, like the Sweeney. He <laughs> said, so I can do it now for you. And, and apparently, Ian Blair was like, oh, all oh, right. And he just wrote on there, on this bit of paper, special branch work is secret. <laughs> Handed it back to him. <laughs> Off you go. You'll be shown the door. Yeah. <laughs> so we get, and that's, and that's the story. And I hope my old colleagues won't, uh, won't, mind, won't mind me saying that apocryphal. I, I, I felt. Uh, very honoured to have got in SB because there were yeah. some turbo brainy, clever people there. I know there's there's a guy Dominic Adler who does um, he does a Substack stuff of of stories and and he's a great guy and he, he he's doing that now. Um, but yeah, there were some really clever, or almost like professor like yeah. people up there, boys and girls. But you could go on to surveillance, you could go on to protection. There were so many avenues you could get that that wasn't advertised in the. Oh, I joined the Met, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. This was now next work. level stuff. The, it, it really was, you know. Um, uh, yeah, and I just, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Went down to port, uh, and obviously, when you join that, like despite being a, a crow in the police again, uh, almost probationer, you have to go somewhere quiet whilst your vetting comes through. And and this is like proper in depth, all your financials. Uh, what radio station what, what you listen to? Are under your pillow? What do you know? The old, uh, do you listen to Forceware? Get that in on the, yeah, um, yeah, Force Radio. Yeah, and, and so yeah, and the, everything. Where did your mum go to school? It was almost like doing yeah. a sort of um, a comprehensive report on a on a on a terrorist job. Yeah, who do they? You know, who do they sit with? Yeah, who do they? Who's theirs? You know, these lines going across. Where's their car? In, you know, ev- it was everything. So it's really in depth. And some people didn't didn't pass. I know one girl. She was uh, her name was Lucy, and she'd been a student, and she travelled around China for a year or so. And she put papers in for the bride. They just went no. So you could have been like you know tapped up could to be a spy. You could have been yeah yeah yeah. Course, no. well, look yeah. at that guy. Yeah. You know, I can't remember. I don't know. No names. The guy who stuck himself under the the wagon who just yeah yeah yeah, got yeah away yeah. from the. Yeah. 
<laughs> anyone know? You don't know, do you? You Could just, you that's just, and, that, that, and that's why those processes are so stringent as well. Do you know what I mean? They have to be, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. And and again, um, I, when you leave as well, when you leave the job, so I've signed for my pension, blah blah. Official secret that comes up says, you will not write a book, go on TV, blah blah blah. Tell anyone. So you know that's why on this sort of stuff. It's all quite sort of opaque, so I wouldn't mention... Uh, I can mention one name, you know, sort of Lady Thatcher, because she's not with us anymore. But, um, yeah, that's a bit further down the line. But, yeah, so I went to Ports. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And you're doing the um, prevention of terrorism stuff there and back and, and check in and assisting with uh, our other agencies, you know, down there. Border security, pretty much. When you go to these sorts of places, and you are now special branch, right, and you turn up, you know, sometimes in, in, in civvy, sometimes presumably in uniform... What are other coppers like with you? Are they like, wow, here's a special branch, you know what I mean? Or are they, oh my God, here's well, a, a, lo- again, you know I mean? a lot of people are like, um, they wanted to get in as well. So they're like, yeah. oh, that. So it was all, I think the last time I wore my uniform was um, uh, 99, you know, the uh, Millennium Eve. Yeah. Because uh, I was in the CID, they went, oh yeah, by the way, everyone, get your top hat back on. And, uh, unif- and so that was the last time I ever wore it until I, until I retired. Okay. Um, so I put in the old trousers on. I think oh, these have shrunk a little bit. You know? <laughs> so I did that with any me. But yeah, uh, by and large, people are really helpful because you've got that warrant card, you've got that cachet of the branch and the Met and Scotland Yard. Like you go all around the world, and people are like, "Oh, you are from Scotland Yard. Nice to see you." Like, yeah. Oh yeah, you know. Um, you know, like, Scotland like, Yard itself is famous, isn't it? Like, like, like your yeah. like your old mob. Yeah. yeah. So when we were sort of amalgamated with um, uh, counter uh, thirteen, so thirteen, the counter terrorism command, uh, the a note came out saying, look, we need a new name. Has anyone really got any thoughts or ideas? And someone said, well, why don't we just keep what we had, special branch protection, because you go, but again, no, that's elitist and stuff. You know, one of my old governors, Duncan, he was berated by a guy for wearing his SB tie, you know, his special branch tie. And he said, you can't really wear that. It's elitist. And I was like, can I wear, Governor, can I wear my Brigade of Guards tie? You know, it's got me uh, it's got me into a few nightclubs and stuff, and kicked out of a few nightclubs, <laughs> I might say. <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, so uh, by and large, people were, people were, unless you're arresting them or nick it, and especially in the protection side of things, everyone's there to help you because they want that, um, they want that visit to go smoothly, you know, yeah, like yeah, if it's yeah, Blair, yeah, like yeah. Tim, Tim alludes to, and you work with us out in, uh, in Israel uh, with Jack and the guys, yeah. Yeah. Um, they, they they want to help because you're trying to keep everyone alive, aren't you? You know that's yeah. that's your base, your base thing. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit there about you, you? You must have presumably did a protection course, a prop course. You call it prop in the in the old build, don't you? So yeah. You must have done like a prop course. What was your prop course like? I did the old. I did well the old the old style. Check check me out. I'm, I'm relatively new in the scheme of things. Um, so it's set. Into, it's split into two parts. You do the first bit. I think we did it at a, an old RAF base in London. And that was sort of the, the hard skills, the fighting and the shooting and stuff like that. You know, you'd be getting attacked or um, uh, you do your shooting uh, as well, training for the for the prop shoot, you know, the hip shoot that you guys you, yeah, yeah, you yeah, guys yeah, do, yeah, a course, yeah. as well. Um, and then the second half was called the VIP, the Viper course. That was like the sort of knives and forks. And you'd stay in, uh, you might be in a hotel somewhere for like 10 days and you would run it as as an operation. Yeah. You know? I mean, no names, no patrol, I won't go into it, but you would have like, an armory you go out for meals you go and do reckeys and stuff with your with your principal and one of the one of the things we did on my on my course the final exercise i think we were in like one day to go and we were sat in uh i think it was a tate tate britain because you 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 know you go into london from i think we were in berkshire drive into london in the full package two cars etc whatever and uh sat in the tate britain two guys are outside with with the motors and we're inside with our principal, a sort of line of sight, uh, as, as you see, you know, I've seen it on the bodyguard program, on the TV yeah. program. You know, we're having our dinner, thinking, uh, you know, stay ahead, stay ahead fast, get a course ahead, <laughs> pay the bill straight away, because if they get up and they're off, you know, yeah, yeah, have yeah, that with yeah, Amber yeah. Rudd, up, oh, we're going, Cobra meeting. Oh, I'm just halfway <laughs> through my Dover soul. Making money, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have yeah. the money. Thank you, I'm guys. Yeah, I'll take that <laughs> bottle of champagne to go. No, there's no drink. That, that was her thing. <laughs> yeah. Never, ever. Uh, but the phone call come in from one of my uh, my colleagues out there, and he ended up as um, as an inspector on Walty Scott. And he said, "I'll just let you know, uh, two planes have crashed into Twin Towers in New York." And I and I went, "Phil, it's a stupid scenario. Who thought that? I thought, I, I, well, we all scenario. did. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. a game changer, wasn't it? Um, yeah, it was, yeah. A real leveler." And I was like, "Crikey!" So I went over and told the instructor, and he said, 
no, that's not part of the uh, exercise scenario. He said, so we went back to the hotel, watched this crazy, you know, this mad tragic It was a crazy thing. day, wasn't it? I think Unf- everybody just, if you didn't have anything, you just down tools. And if you had stuff to do, you down tools, didn't you? And everyone just glued on the telly all day, didn't they? Well, it's the same as when Diana died. Everyone knows yeah. where they, you know, they know where they were. It's yeah. um, it, it's madness. You still can't believe it. And then your, your lot were in, um, you know, chop, chopping them up in Tora Bora, weren't they? G, <laughs> G Squadron and that. Yeah, in fact, one of our my mates who went up, Went there and ended up as an SSM up there. I left a few years ago. He, he was telling my mate, he said, uh, these guys, the Taliban, are just like running here. Like, how do you legislate for people who are just like fanatically running towards you and just taking them out uh, in Afghan? You know, early days, wasn't it? You know, that, stuff, uh, yeah. that, all, that stuff, early op stuff, yeah. Gosh. So, going back to your prop stuff, what was your first, can you say who your first principal was once you'd, once you'd passed? Yeah, you passed? Um, well, he, he was a, a former Northern Ireland secretary, a conservative guy. Um, I don't know if he's still a lord now, but he was a lord. I won't say his name, but he lived down in uh, Wiltshire Way. Yeah. Uh, quite a sort of bruff, uh, brusque character. He's about 80, 80 odd now, and works on his farm, you know, keeps himself fit and strong. So that was my first one because after the, after the bodyguard course ended, anyone who passed, Bearing in mind, nine eleven just happened. Yeah, they just beefed everything up. The security, all the teams are like, right, you get up there, you get up there, and I went straight up. So uh, one of my friends, Gary, he went off to uh, the Blair team, and he went and did that, and I took his place down in uh, down in Wiltshire with a good mate of mine, Toby, who sort of looked after me, took me under his wing, and just said, you know, it's all just play it low key, discreet. We're not the Americans, you know, rolling in hot and just you know, <laughs> shades on. It was all, yeah. It was all, you know, no big bat, you know, but none of that. It's just, it's just low key. And I think, I think we still do it quite well. Certainly, people, people are doing it still now, and it, and it, it's good. You know, like I say, only, only lost one protected person in eighteen years. So that's statistically still quite, still quite good. But it yeah, wasn't my yeah, fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah Margaret yeah. Thatcher died on me at the Ritz in the Ritz Hotel. Which is can you tell of... us that story? Yeah, yeah, I can. Do. Yeah, do you want to hear it now? No, let's uh... get that story out. Of the... You can't, you can't, you can't dump on... that in and then uh, not tell me. Yeah, the, yeah. So this, uh, I mean, if, obviously people in the job know about it. And um, so it's crazy days. I was sat up there. Um, she was in the Ritz Hotel. Because just to clarify this for people, once they've been prime minister, they get protection for the rest of their life, don't they? Pretty much, yeah. They will do pretty much, especially yeah. if they want it. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I mean, who's not gonna who's not gonna turn it down? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm not talking out of school. I mean, it's pretty common knowledge that yeah. um, all former. I mean, you know, they, the Home Office say we don't comment on security matters, yeah. and, and we don't, you know, sort of team structures, tactics. Um, but a lot of it's out there in, in the mainstream yeah. anyway. But yeah, if you're a former, you sort of hit the jackpot because. You never have to worry about drink driving anymore. You know, your house <laughs> is protected. I wish, lift. Yeah, yeah. And look at Liz Truss. You know, how did she did like seven weeks, didn't she? You know, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, Others have spent more time more time in the tea queue. In the naffy <laughs> queue. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so Lady T, I can't. Uh, so I've been with Blair for four years before that. As Great. a prime minister when you uh, did No, he was out of office. He was okay. out of office. So Tim was a team leader uh with another guys um a few of the guys yeah and that that was a that was a great team you you know you were sort of in the in the limelight a little bit as well so it was it was quite difficult because you'd before that I'd been on sort of Northern Ireland secretary's team people you wouldn't even recognize walking down the street yeah as soon as you got out of the car with TB um you know People would straight away. TB, they're on in. Yeah, TB, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't calling them tuberculosis. Yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> well, you were in Gaza, known, weren't you? Just when he um, was known as TB, and Jack used to go mad and goes, "Your tuberculosis coming this weekend." <laughs> <laughs> He's good, lad, Jack. Yeah, yeah, but, Jack's um, funny guy. Top, top bloke. Yeah, for a boot neck, obviously. But, um, <laughs> so yeah, so um, I got I got the call, and they said, um, you know, it, it was it was post. So I did the Olympics, and I looked, I was with Seb Coe. I was posted with Seb Coe. For the whole of the Olympics, which was like the best job you could have. I can imagine. Because yeah. he was the boss of it. He went to everything. He was absolutely fantastic. And he was like a guy. He's like us, you know, chatting away. Yeah. So you'd get, uh, just digressing slightly, you'd drop him back off at the hotel at night and say, right, boss, um, you know, as you do, um, what's your plans for the morning? And he's with his wife in the back. His wife has then, Cassie. He said, um, uh, he said, I might go on the bike for half an hour in the morning. Then I'll go down the gym. His wife's like, I am not a bike. He said, I might go on the bike for half an hour. <laughs> and while I'm in the front, sort of, did I just hear that? But yeah, so nice, g- great guy. Self-deprecating uh, and, a, and a lovely fella. So that finished. And then I'm looking for a team, you know. Yep. Just, um, you either go on to visitor support or maybe into uh, training or whatever. And someone said, oh, they're looking for someone on the uh, Thatcher team. Someone's retiring or whatever. 
And I thought, crikey, coming from a mining family in Nottinghamshire. Yeah, that's going to go down like a, like a fart in a space. <laughs> well, it was, it was. <laughs> it was, yeah. It was either join the military or go down the pit. Um, so I actually, I actually spoke to my mum. I said, look, just like, yeah, because my granddad was a miner, my dad was a miner. And she said, oh, yeah, you go, yeah, go on, son, yeah. Um, your granddad liked uh, Lady, Lady Thatcher because um, she took on Scargill, who was like, yeah. My mates at school, they were like soup kitchens, you know, and I'd be walking past with a, you know, lion bar or whatever like that. Oh, God, poor, you know, they were they were up against it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, anyway, yeah. I got the sort of uh, okay. But um, so I went on that, but she was quite poorly towards the end, as they all are. Um, and they let, she went to stay in the Ritz because she couldn't do those uh, stairs in her house at Chester Chester Square, I think it was. Like nine flights, which I think what kept her going. Imagine doing those all the time, yeah, up yeah, and down, yeah, up yeah, and time. Day. And my good mate Toby, who I'd... I'd I'd started on the department down in in, um, in Wiltshire with him. He said, "Oh, come on, Nobby, and uh, it's it's a nice number, you know, it's good. You've done that sort of like the Blair kinetic, not kinetic stuff, but you know, hard graph travel, travel. Yeah. Just you know, you can relax a little bit, but you know, she's not she's not mad busy. So yeah, 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 okay. Um, he used to wind me up. He said because you know she had a little bit of dementia and um, you know coppers and squad. He was ex uh, he was ex scaly signals in Germany, you know." He said, uh, yeah, she got a bit of dementia, so you know she'll have like a lucid, uh, quite lucid days, and some days she won't, she won't know what's what's happening. I thought, yeah, okay, when it comes to it all, you know. He said, uh, well, he said, what I do is I go in every morning, and tell her it's my birthday, she gives me fifty quid. I was like, <laughs> I said, you do not. He said, no, I don't. But you know, that's a sort of you've got to enjoy your work, haven't you? You know. Um, anyway, she was always immaculately qu- coiffured and stuff, and I thought, oh right, this is a big thing. So we're in the Ritz Hotel. Uh, Tuesday the 8th of April 2013 or thereabouts um, she had a lovely suite of rooms and she had a nurse and doctor pretty much with her all the time the doctor would be in and out but she had a nurse with her 24-7 we were outside sort of stagging on as you do but in quite you know opulent circumstances we had all our kit there yeah. you know you know the kit we carry yeah. all the first aid stuff we had a great you know first aid guy Al who used to uh, help us out who was like that next day you probably remember Al Moore he'd uh, did some bits with us out in, in Israel and Gaza. Uh, so we had it, you know, it was all on the board. So I'm there with my pal who turns up and he's helping out because Toby, my mate, has gone training. So the guy who's with me is normally on a different team, just helping. He said, the ex uh three para guy from the Falklands with the Queen's Gallantry Medal named Mark. And I thought, oh, we're pretty safe here, you know. He said, oh, I hope I'm not um, not a jinx. Yeah, I've just come back off holiday and two people collapsed, collapsed and dropped down dead in front. I've been giving them CPR. I said, you know, fatal words. I went, nah, be nice and quiet today. Nothing's going to happen. <laughs> She's going nowhere. Set down the back stairs in a, in a bag, you know, to the undertaker's crikey. So, um, so we sat there, feet up on the bed, you know, doing a bit some bomb, a bit of weapons cleaning, TVs on. Because she was there, you know, there for 16 hours. She might not go anywhere. She might have yeah. her hair done in a room or whatever. You know, she was 87, quite rightly. So about... <laughs> Midday, I get a phone call from our command centre at the yard. Uh, and they're there sort of 24-7 to provide uh, op support to us and do a fantastic job. You know, I need to say that now. You, you, we couldn't really survive. We couldn't survive without them. But it was a guy, uh, a prop guy, who's, who's in there just helping out again. He said, uh, John, quick question. This is a question no prop officer ever wants to hear. Uh, is your principal dead? And I went. And he pulled the phone away, looked at it. And I said... Is she dead? Well, straight away, Mark, OB, like, his head pops up. Our feet both come off the um, bed. Uh, we weren't on the bed together, I must add. You know, we were sat each on <laughs> either side of it in a chair with our feet you, up. You, you, we, we won't pop. Remember that little one foot on the floor in the, in the, in the, in the always keep one foot on the floor, yeah. <laughs> Just get that, get that straight. I wasn't in the RAF, and I can't even say that. <laughs> anyway, so I said to him, uh, why'd you say that? And he said, uh, it's on the news. Have you not got Sky News on? I said, no, watching Homes Under the Hammer. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Should never have said that. Anyway, you know. <laughs> so I'm scrabbling around for the remote control. And in yellow and black font at the bottom of the screen, Lady Thatcher dies in Sweet at the Ritz. And I sort of went. So I sort of I ran through the door, the interconnecting door, and in the corridor into a room of the nurse and doc- uh, nurse and doctor. And they're there sort of with a mouse open, something. And I said, the lady passed away. And she said, uh, Anne, the nurse, was a lovely girl. She'd been with Lady T for years and years. I said, how do you know? I said, 
on the news. So look out the window. The world's media were cli- trying to climb Absolutely. up on step. It was bank after bank. I can imagine, yeah. Chaos, chaos. It's like when you get a pint, buy a pint, everyone's like, take a photo. <laughs> uh, <so, laughs> you know you will. He's going to kill me. <laughs> um, so she went, we've only told two people. So who do you have to tell when someone dies? Their next to kin. So who's their next to kin? Carol and Mark. So the rumour was that... Um, Someone had phoned up and sold that to the newspapers. Wow. For, that was the route. I can't, you know, I wouldn't... You can't know, but yeah. Yeah, wow, but I thought, well, hang on a second. How can we got missed out? And then someone was seen coming out of the house with bin bags full of kits, um, handbags and jewellery and stuff that appeared on eBay and stuff like that. But, you know, whether that's substantiated or not, Phil, you know. It's yeah, not yeah, what you yeah, know, yeah. it's what you can prove. Remember yeah, that, you know, so, yeah, a few good men. It. You get done with getting caught. A few good men. It's not what you know, it's what you can Yeah, but um, I ended up with a nice set of uh, pearl earrings and a necklace. And no, I didn't. <laughs> Put those back. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I always wear these on a protection operation. And I don't care for the accusation again. <laughs> but yeah, so, but you know what coppers are like. So it was done, you know, it was done. Yeah. The phone was white hot. My governor, Andy, was like, right, uh, everyone's took the commissioners on the on wants to know what's happening. And I said, well, we go into Operation, what was it called? Not Blue Ridge, something. I can't remember. You know, they have the operation names yeah, like yeah, Tay yeah, Bridge yeah. and uh, you yeah. know, London Bridge for the Queen when someone passes That's away. Right, yeah. Protect the book, they have to tell. So uh, it just sort of like, uh, it just started the wheels rolling. Uh, and that was it. And we're like, crikey. And then my old reporting sergeant from when I was a probationer at Hendon, uh, sorry, at Holborn, he turns up. Um, he's a superintendent. It's his first day. He goes, Richard, I gave you one job. I, thought, I said, look, only, still only one in 18. That's statistically, it's quite good. <laughs> but you have to, you have to, if you don't laugh, you'll cry, you know. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, coppers are ruthless. So I got, I was getting texts through saying, oh, we heard there was like milk bottles stacking up outside the door. And, you know, like when you have a sudden death <laughs> yeah, in real life, yeah, yeah. the mail's hanging out the letterbox. <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah, but, yeah. But yeah, so that was a bit of a, and I ended up with uh, George Osborne for a couple of years after that, which was which was great fun, and he was the first person I looked after, um, on the team. He was younger than me, so that was quite good. I mean, a couple of years, but you know, he was a nice guy. And, and but I would always say, don't believe everything you read in the papers. Don't believe politicians. You know, when they're not kissing babies, they're stealing the lollipops. You know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, sto- yeah. that that yeah. bit from the Hunt for Red October. You know, <laughs> the guy, the senator. Listen, I'm a politician. Um, but yeah, he, he he was good as gold, and uh, he, he he treated us quite well, you know. Uh, the Any, other anybody else you can tell us about that you looked after? Any interesting stories from the, from your time? <sighs> I mean, I bet you've got loads of stories. I have. Some, I don't some, know whether some of them are going to be out of bounds, aren't they? <laughs> well, you know, what, they were they were pretty well behaved, you know. Uh, a lot a lot of them uh, for the most part. So nothing that's not in that's not been sort of reported on, anything like that. But we we did took we took Blair up to. Um, uh, and his wife and and uh, his son and, and the nanny up to Borneo and Tim Bainbridge on that operation. I don't know okay. if he's uh, mentioned it. So we'd flown up from um, this beachfront villa, got helicopters up there, great fun. See the orangutans, you know, up in Sepilok in Borneo. Yep. And I'm there with my mate, who a stalwart guy, top bloke from uh, Nottingham, come down. You know, I think he ended up as a team leader on on 701 on the PM's team. Uh, anyway, so we're in this like private um, special viewing platform they'd laid on just for him, you know, a VVIP. And um, they bring out these sort of two um, two orangutans with a, with a keeper each, you know, on like a sort of lead yeah. almost, you know. Or I could get one of them for the mother-in-law. But um, so they're on this on these leads and yeah, like majestic big creatures, you know, huge big things. And one of them walks up to Blair behind him and punches him in the back. And my mate and says, um, did you see that? And we just like sort of start cracking out laughing, you know, trying to. And, and the boss is like, ah, guys, guys, he just um, punched me in the back. And, and he said, well, we're not going to shoot you. The guys, the thing's endangered anyway. What are we yeah, going to, you know? Twist it up. And I was like, the boss yeah. <laughs> I said, he's probably a conservative voter. Anyway, he doesn't like what he did with the uh, NHS or whatever. Anyway, so we're just giggling away. And t- yeah, I don't know, TB had ever, ever, ever been in a fight, but, you know, he'd had prot all that, all that long way. I think he saw the funny side of it. And then a few minutes later, we're stood there, um, my colleague and me, he's one side, I'm the other side of this platform, keeping an eye out. And uh, we've got the umbrellas up. And Mrs. B, like uh, Cherie, who was lovely as well, really lovely lady, she said, uh, oh, guys, guys, it's raining. Can we use your umbrellas? 
And we looked up, and my mate went, that's not rain. So I'm the to <laughs> orangutan, so weeing on the... And I think he said, no, she, she's a scouser, he's probably used to it. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> he found the level. He just can't, you know, <laughs> yeah. too soon, too soon. <laughs> but yeah, so that was, uh, I mean, those sort of travelling teams, um, they're, they're all well just, sought after. a lot of travelling. We are. He well, took me eight I mean, years to get on that team. I had to buy yeah. a lot of alcohol for people to get on that. in particular. That, it black, was, that black jet they used to they used to fly around. They just used to go everywhere, didn't it? It was absolutely nuts, yeah. I think we spent three weeks out of every four overseas or I, getting back. There was and, a time when I worked out that he was coming to us and he'd spent more time in the air in, in sort of like a month than he had on the ground. Yes, yeah. And that's insane, isn't it? That's like mad. Tim Tim mentioned this story where they went to Australia and back in a day. So it worked out some kind of Twilight Zone thing where timings were, they'd almost passed themselves going <laughs> forward and <laughs> back. I was like, it's, oh, it's yeah, absolutely... Did it in the, DeLor- in the DeLorean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So where we're going, we don't need Rose. But yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was mad. But uh, it, it was a great team. It was a great team to be on. And it's who you work with again. You know, we had some yeah. fantastic... Uh, skippers on there, sergeant that who'd been X nineteen and old branch stalwarts and and guys who I work with, you know, you couldn't do it without them. They were um, they were just like good good guys and girls, you know. Did you do any royal protection? I never did. No, because they're um, completely different, aren't they? They're well, a animal. I think it was it, exactly that. It was all it's never the twain shall meet. You know, I think we were vetted to a higher level than the royalty lot as well, uh, which I don't know whether that was a a, a bone of contention or whatever. Uh, but I always thought, you know, when you see the royal, the royals doing protection. Um, in fact, so I did my prop course with a couple of with guys who do a joint course, and then you split off. I was ministerial, yeah. special branch. You uh, choose that. Is that down to you? Yeah, well, because you're in that. Yeah, because you're in because as was the, you were special branch then. So if you if you were like knackered or you, you fancied a, a, a break on, from prop, you could go do something else within the branch. You know, surveillance, go and work with yeah. um, Vauxhall or or Box or you know, yeah. do some really good. You know, agent running some tasty stuff that you just wouldn't. Well, you know, you wouldn't believe. But yeah, um, yeah so I always thought the royalty, the royalty side. A lot of it's like, oh, the picture, you need to stay sort of a little bit away for the stay out the camera shot and stuff. Yeah. Whereas we'd be sort of right tight in on the yeah, you, tight you in are, on the shoulder. I mean, I, I looked after, you know, nothing on your level, but, you know, I did ambassadors in Afghanistan who needed me there. Mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. I did people like Liam Gallagher who didn't need me at all and just wanted me to be there because he could have me there. Do you know what I mean? But it's more for a nutter's going to take him. As soon as yeah, they yeah, see yeah, that, yeah, they... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not a nutter, excuse me. <laughs> we can get rid of that. But again, that out, but you yeah. would, you know, with the ambassador, if you're in a shot and you need to be in that shot because you need to be next to him... He's not telling you to get out of that shot, is he? Whereas with with Liam or someone of that stature, back, back off, Whitfield. You know, yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I, mean? I, I guess that's the same with the Royals, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but well, it's not so much them. It's their sort of entourage. entourage who are yeah, sort the... of, you know, it's, uh, I mean, the Royal household is so powerful, isn't it? You know, um, but yeah, so it, it it was, it definitely was a different animal. You've got to deal with uh, things that... like butlers and all that sort of stuff as well, haven't you? Which I, I would imagine is absolutely... I think absolute... you do, yeah. They all get like MVOs and LVOs. They get that medal at the end, you know. We, <laughs> we used to say on our side, on the branch side, that um, some of them are more royal than the royals. You know, they go over there with, with like a Cockney accent, some skipper, some sergeant from division, giving it all sort of large, you know, blah. And then you'd see him like a couple of months later, and they were like all these clipped Italian <laughs> accents, <laughs> pocket no, squares. Like, like, like that. what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Um, yeah, and we, I looked after the American ambassador, uh, William Farish, um, one of my early early ones as well, 2003. And he went to a garden party. He was friends with the Queen because he had his own uh, stud farm in Kentucky. So they were like, but we're not, you know, but, but, but good good friends because she, she liked her horses, obviously. Yeah. And it was a garden party, so... Uh, it was in their in their realm, so we got in there. We said, "Oh, Met Paul Seven, or whatever it was, call sign." Coming in, and um, I saw this guy in a top hat speaking to one of the guys I'd been on on my prop course with, who went to royalty, Scott, who was a sergeant. And I saw them sort of chatting to each other as we turned up, and so he came over to me. He'd obviously asked what rank I was because they were like absolute rank mental there, as opposed yeah. to in the branch, it was really the role. You had not the rank, yeah. you know. We yeah, sort yeah, of yeah, yeah. use each other's first name, still with respect and you know, yeah. due deference, etc. But he'd obviously come anyway. So he came over this guy and he said, uh, "Right, uh, your man is in our realm now. We will take care of him. You will look at, you will stay over there." 
I said, great. I said, where's the tea and cake? I said, uh, over to you. And just put a call into the OC. said, you know, protection handed to, um, or withdrawn for an hour because you're in the most, probably one of the most secure venues in when I had a cup of tea. I don't know whether people before had been like, no, no, we must have. And, you know, are you going to die in a ditch over that because you've got to work with these? But, you know, we're all on the same team, you know. And I thought, I'm starving. I'm, I'm having 10 minutes of t- off here. Yeah, I'm going to scratch my bum <laughs> and, and have some a cup. sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we took Blair to Zurich. And he did a speech over there, and it was about sort of public sector reform. So he'd get his like you know, two hundred grand, a spit. It's all in the public domain, and yeah. uh, he'd tell these same old, same old jokes. And we'd get back in the. He'd come off stage, and we're like, "Oh, he told that." He said, oh, "What do you think to the speech?" And and uh, you, you probably remember one of these guys, um, Yorkshireman called John, rugby player, who came on came on the team, and we got in the lift. And the boss came and he went, oh, what do you think to the speech, guys? Okay, you know, just sort of making very brief conversation. Yeah. He, he wouldn't, uh, like, engage. He had more stuff going on in his mind, sort of thing. And my pal went, oh, yeah, not too bad, apart from the, you know, none of us can retire anymore, you know. And, and TB was like, oh, yeah, but John, um, you know, gone are the days when you can retire at 55 and uh, get a pension. And my mate John went, well, you have. <laughs> 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 Done, wah, you know. Wah, wah. Yeah. <laughs> and, we're, and so we're like <laughs> sniggering away but yeah sort of went so you'd, you'd be with him I met Robert De Niro Keith Lemon you know talk about you know <laughs> one spectrum to the other end of the spectrum and De Niro was like are you guys ex, ex-military I said well I was um, I was in the guards my mate there was uh, in the Artillery then Paycor you know <laughs> <sighs> go figure yeah but a good lad you know good lad as well so yeah um, it's a totally different line you're living their life with them as soon as you go into work, it's all down to what they do, you know. Yeah, and I mean, if you, he's you, going to gym, you live longer. <clears throat> you live a longer life than them because you live. You, you're, you're there an hour before at least getting yourself ready, and when they Mid- go to bed at night, you've got to go and hand your kit in, do any reporting, oh. you've got to do, catch up with your emails. I mean, your team when it used to come over to us, I'd be like, wow, when do you actually get anything? If you, the advance did all right, didn't they? The advance was a great job. You get, right? you get maybe a day if you're advanced. You could get a drink and maybe yeah. get out. Cause you won't carry and you get, you get a beer and uh, you certainly get uh, smashed off your head. And um, but you could maybe go and see the sights in Israel. That's yeah. one of the. I, I remember. I think I worked it out. I actually lived there for six months of my life. You know, when you put a portion, it yeah. he was there every month, wasn't he, Phil? That's right. For yeah. at least at least yeah, a week yeah, yeah, at a yeah. time. I mean. He, gr- he grafted. I mean, all right, he's in the old air-conditioned car. I remember being stuck on an advanced checkpoint into Ramallah uh, with the IDF guys, and we'd done the briefing earlier. I think I'd have to, I'd had to do the briefing, you know, because my skipper yeah. Gary was like, right, you can do it. You know, you know, we'll share it about. I said, right, I'm going to be on the checkpoint. I said, uh, I, I just, I'll just try and make sure that I don't run down to all the IDF guys with my radio leads going, can someone help me plug these in, you know? And they think it's a suicide, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And I was stood, I was stood there at some, like, he was visiting some couscous factory, I think it was. It might have been in Jericho. I said, oh, you've got a, um, one of our guys is advancing in there, one of the skippers, Ken. And it was like, so it's like 40 degrees out there anyway. Yeah. You've got all your armour on and all your kit and your suits. And I looked in this, like, tent. And Ken's at the back there around these couscous, these massive burners that are <laughs> heating all this couscous up. So it's about 100 in there, you know. The poor guy is melting. And we sort of went, oh, you know, so you do... All sorts of, you could be in the UAE at some prince's palace uh, or in Oman. You could be on hol- you could be on holiday. My first ever job with him, my, my skipper actually knew one said, uh, right, welcome to the team. And it's probably a bit like selection. You, you know, the harder bit is once you're on the team, you know, not yeah, getting yeah. in there, yeah. you are still on probation. He yeah. said, right, you're advancing the private holiday. I went, oh, okay. And they used to go to Egypt a lot, I think, um, get the odd freebie. Uh, and... Um, he said, no, it's, uh, I think it was Richard Branson's game reserve in South Africa. He said, so you're going day after tomorrow. We've had to, um, any flight we could get you on is a Virgin Atlantic upper class. So book your limo from the, from your home to the airport. And I thought, you've sort of arrived, you know. But, um, you know, it, it was fantastic. It was, a, it was a great job. Sometimes you think, is, this, is it real? You know, you pinch yourself. You yeah, yeah, and then yeah, the next yeah. time you're in Lashkagar advancing a private visit for him, uh, and your old regiments out there, or one of your old company yeah. command, it's 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 crazy. And you do bump into people, don't you, all around the world? And think, yeah, it's crazy. You think, how did you even get here? What, yeah. what? <laughs> well, they say they say <laughs> it's a, what's the saying? They say it's a small world, but I wouldn't want to paint it. You know, yeah. it's um, <laughs> it, it, it's nuts. It's absolutely crazy. So you, yeah. you did your time, and you decided it. What what, what <laughs> triggered you getting out? Did you, were you time? I done my I done my uh, pension time. Yeah, yeah, okay. twenty nineteen. Um, <clears throat> so that yeah, that was it. Um, 
done my 30 years. I'd actually done a little less because my army pension had had gone in to my police pension. Right, okay. And then they changed it in 2012, which was quite awkward. I was sat there with people, you know, at the Treasury, George Osborne's team, and there's people going, they're making us work to a 67 or something. No, so I said, of course they are. They're politicians. <laughs> I said, did you expect <laughs> them to be, like, honourable on the... Yeah, just my... Uh, just my take on it. And, um, yeah, so I managed to transfer that money over all the six years uh, service because I was a junior. So That's right. You, you, quite, you do yeah. a couple for the Queen, didn't you? Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. <clears throat> so, yeah, um, I thought, yeah, it's time to go. Uh, go and do some private stuff and get out while the going's good. So as what well do you do now? now? What, what's your, what's your, what's your <clears throat> gig yeah, I do now? A little, I do a little bit of everything now, you know. Um, a bit of private security in London, some high net worth stuff that some of the guys and uh, on on teams for that, I did a, a month in Saint Tropez last year, looking after some um, some guy thirty days, which was quite good. But I've also signed up to some extras thing because um, before I left the battalion, that two weeks signing off, PVR in, yeah, purse your voluntary release. Uh, so I had to actually pay to leave the yeah. army, and some guys were getting the PVR as well. Yeah, so, yeah, well, yeah some, yeah, but yeah. some were getting the options. I was with the guy at Hendon, they got the options to change. They got pay, they got twenty grand yeah, they to got, leave. <laughs> Here's the old. Um, Mate, RCT rice crispy taste. Bucket of lollies and come out sucking me fun, oh, mate. <laughs> mate oh. If ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd have a fabulous Christmas. So <laughs> I was, you know, so I let. But just before we left, Phil, um, the, the quartermaster said uh, the Golden Eye film shooting up in Leavesden, Pierce Brosnan, need some guys to go up and help on that and do some acting. I thought this could be the next Pierce. Pierce Brosnan stand double. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I turned out as third dumpy Russian from the left. Uh, and that was me <laughs> with my... Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, we just ran around all night. Uh, all the food, you know, squaddies are like, oh, uh, hi, guys, help yourself. It's all free. You can have sushi, fish and chips, go- <laughs> everything, bit of everything <laughs> in the old mess tin. <laughs> yeah, Pierce Brosnan, they were like, just don't touch that. Pierce Brosnan, sushi. Because, you know, they have to look lean, the, the camera, yeah, yah, yah, the camera yah, adds yah, yah. 10 pounds sort of thing. And that was just an absolute giggle. And uh, so that was my story when I joined Hendon and went on court. Uh, tell me something interesting about you. Uh, well, yeah, I've been in a... In a I've been the f- for Dumby Russian from the left. On the left, yeah. <laughs> did, you not, did you not recognise me? But it was... i tell you what, yeah. <laughs> you mean you don't yeah, know? Yeah, <laughs> I'm still, still doing that impression. But no, so uh, the thing is, it was all night filming. This, uh, you know, And I think we were on screen for about a nanosecond. I took my then girlfriend along to sort of see it, almost like her it is, and I'll buy you a lolly, an ice cream, watch this. Here it comes. Gone, finished. I was like, she said, w- w- when's your bit coming off? I said, yeah, it's, it's gone. It's, it's finished. <laughs> <laughs> so look, I left oh. and um, yeah, COVID hit. COVID hit. So absolutely knackered everything, you know. Yeah. So I think I helped. I went and helped my mate do some bits and bobs of his uh, his business, some tree surgery stuff, running around. But you know, the odd day just to keep out in the fresh air because yeah. that was like crazy days. And then this year, I just um, signed up to this like extras thing, and they said, "Oh, your first one. Can you go along?" I think it's because I'm a redhead. It's a one time being a sort of strawberry blonde has worked in my favour, you know, because you can play the sort of terrorist. But I think the it's a new Ghostbusters film that's coming out in December. Oh, okay. They said, oh, we want. There's going to be a few of you doing this. I, I had to sign an NDA for that as well. Yeah. So I can't even allude to what that was. But crikey, um, all the makeup on it. We all had our own makeup girl in there, and. You, it must have been two hundred grand a day they're paying for that sort of stuff. The people running around touching up your makeup. Yes, it's a, it's a production. It's a whole. It's, it's huge, isn't it? It's huge, absolutely huge ma- deal. But Phil, it's like it's like it's just something different. And I, I, I always said I never want to work full time again if I can help it. No, that's why that's why I caned myself as a as a squaddy from sixteen and a half, a cop protection up at four in the morning for the five o'clock train on the hamster wheel yeah. going pick it getting back sleeping you know four out you know and that's why i did it so you know because time no amount of money bought and uh, a second of time did it you know no. and that's what i said looking after these billionaires and stuff they're like desperate to cling on to that you know keep going keep going keep going which i get you know but um i do but you can only spend so much as well can't you and i always say my currency now is time do you know what i mean that's that's you and, know, that's, and health health yeah. is wealth i think i think you you find you i'm being sort of proselytizing if you find your contentment everyone finds it in different places i went to sudan on a prop job in 2005 we took hillary ben out there <coughs> and i was the advance officer so we'd flown in sort of you know business class happy days and then got to khartoum and i was like God, and then flew down to uh, Darfur. Uh, I think I think my mate Toby went to Juba, um, 
Like, Where's the ensuite? You know, you were literally, there was nothing there. It's horrendous and place, it's, isn't it? It's, <laughs> um, it, it really opened my eyes, mate. And we're, we're driving along in this in this car. There's the bizarre thing. I took a photo of it on our camera then. There's a goat stood on a pile of bricks eating a plastic carrier bag. I was like, <laughs> they didn't put that in the tourist brochure, you know. <laughs> and so we got to this camp and they're in the middle of, you know, there's a hundred or thousands of them. I don't know how many we living under plastic sheet with nothing they've actually got nothing yeah. and this little girl was in this dress made of rags this little girl and she must have been about seven and she's just like looking at me you know obviously quite classically handsome what you might call a classic profile <laughs> and uh you know I, we so, I sort of looked at her and i was like well, what have i got my sort of ops fest you know those five eleven fishing jokes yeah, yeah. i had, a, I had a, a flat half a bottle of coca-cola that i went right have that <laughs> pen well the pen just went straight in her ear the bit of coke she opened sort of drank it and was like her eyes lit up you know yeah. and i thought i'll never moan about my coffee is cold again yeah, in fact, have another coffee. when you see stuff like you know this, what it's on a different yeah. level isn't it? it's on a different level but we but we've been conditioned now every society with your instagrams and everything to to just compare what we've got with everyone, with everyone else. It's that uh, Roosevelt thing, isn't it? Comparison is a thief of joy. Why have they got... My little boy, he says, <laughs> Daddy, Tesla, I said. I said, Mate. I said it's, just a, it's just a bit of metal, you know. <laughs> oh, a new one. I said, it's just a number on a plate that they want you to buy. Now I've retired, I, th I think I'm a lot calmer. You know, you can see things for what they are if you want. Yeah. And you appreciate other things now in life, don't you? Having, having, having seen a little bit, do you know what I mean? I think you... My perspective on things certainly aren't what other people's perspectives are back here who haven't done as much as I have. Do you know what I mean? Because they, they, they get excited over little things. Yeah. And little things don't bother me anymore. I'm like, yeah, so what? When you've seen like yeah, the proper yeah, so what? Do you know what I mean? the but, proper uh, deprivation. My arms and legs are still on. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So what? There's <laughs> yeah, always, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, your yeah. worst day is someone's best day yeah. ever, you know. And I think a lot of people are like, they're sort of like just peddling along, aren't they? they? Yeah. They're trying to work, you know, every, all the prices going up and everything. They're just about kept in that little, you're just about making it, you're just about. Uh, and then what's really going on, you know, whether it's, you know, you can get into conspiracy stuff, can't you? But yeah, what, what, it, what is happening, you know, and we've seen it. I think uh, life is pretty finite, isn't it? You've seen it, certainly. And, um, you know, now guys, guys are getting ill and stuff, are getting older, we're all getting older, you know, the old knees go a bit, you're like, oh. You're not 20 again. I still, in my head, I still feel like I'm a, yeah, a young run, lad. Run around, do these bits and pieces. It's, it's true, it's true. So have you got any any, <clears> any, <throat> any final plans? Or are you just now content, chilling, doing your bits and pieces, taking it as it comes? Pretty much, pretty much. Choosing? Yeah, pretty much that. Um, I quite like, uh, the, the extra thing is, is really good. Because again, it, <clears throat> for me, it's who you meet. It's about, it's about little moments, you know? Yeah. Meet you, meet Johnny, you know Rosie, yeah. and and uh, you sort of get that bit of energy from people. I think, yeah, because we are people person, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah definitely. And 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 that's what I like. Uh, so I'm up to town for a dinner tonight, see some old lads from from the army and stuff, and and bits and bobs, and yeah, uh, I think you just got to be trying to be content content with yeah. life. You know, you sit yeah, down you and go, you know what? It's it's not that. Well, it's been it's been great having you on. <clears throat> We've had fun. I'm sure. <laughs> I want to get you in again and winkle some more of these stories out of you at some I've got, stage. I've got, a lot, I've got a lot written down. I've written, <laughs> I've written a lot down. As the years go by, the sort of like the, the, um, there's, there's more likely to be stuff that you can talk the about. The impact, yeah. <laughs> well, as they start dying. Yeah. So we'll just... <laughs> I've got... I've got as, they, as they pile in, give us a shout and we'll have you back on. I've got loads. I'd love to come back. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks for looking after Look, me. Thanks for coming. Thanks, mate. Great to have you. All right, see you in a See bit. you again soon. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you, guys.